Welcome to the Stock Report as we take a look back at week 12 of college football and see what 2023 prospects help their stock and hurt their stock. What's crack a -lackin? It's your boy, Bro Schmo. Just in case you did not know, so go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the content. As always, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let's have that nice, beautiful football discourse. Special thanks to Manscaped for sponsoring the video. You get 20% off plus free shipping when you use promo code Bro Schmo at check out if you're trying to get that special someone something special for their special area then i suggest a special christmas gift like the special lawnmower 4.0 let's go ahead and get into this and we're gonna first talk about hendon hooker i think that's kind of the obvious one it's official he's out for the remainder of the season with an acl he's not based on the timeline he's not gonna be able to He's not going to participate in the off-season draft process. So the real question is, what does that do for his stock? But first, I kind of want to mention the season he had because he played unbelievable. Like this dude was well on his way to winning the Heisman, even if they didn't win that South Carolina game. I think that cat, he played so well this, this past weekend. It was just that defense was just dog water this week. And, like, I mean, just looking at the stats, man, he threw for three touchdowns. Uh, you might be like, the uh, completion rate wasn't ideal when you take the adjusted completion rate. It's close to 70%, which is still solid. And uh, we had, yeah, they had three drops from his receivers on the day. And, like, honestly, offensively, this guy was doing everything you wanted him to. He really was. It just... Good luck keeping up when the other offense is scoring at will. Really. But I think regardless of the outcome of that game, I thought he was well on his way to winning the Heisman. Uh, I kind of like settled on him being like a top 50 pick, though I would push back at drafted him in the first round. So let's talk about what this means for his draft stock. Will it hurt it? We saw what happened with a guy like uh, David Ajabo last year when he got hurt. Uh, on his pro day doing drills and uh you could probably say he dropped like at least a good half a round or maybe full round like uh, people were thinking about this guy inside that maybe the top 10 at least the top 20 and then he falls to like uh i think it was like mid second round or around somewhere in the 40s i believe and yeah i think it it is gonna hurt his stock does it take him out of the top 50? I think firmly it does because it's not like, uh, and I brought brought up David Ajabo to kind of compare two different prospects, right? Outside of outside of position, you look at a guy like Ajabo who just had all these freaky tools and just a tremendous athlete opposed to, and he was a younger pro, or no, he was 22 coming out. So he's a young prospect compared to, Hooker, who's going to be 25 on draft day, and he does have limited tools when it comes to his arm. He doesn't have that velocity. He can't really throw it on a rope downfield. He relies on a lot of touch on deep to intermediate passes. He is is underneath, and even intermediate accuracy it could be it is a bit inconsistent. Like he'll throw it in the vicinity, but the ball place in it placement isn't always ideal so it's like you see limitations with the arm he's a good athlete but he i would say he, he prefers to work inside the pocket when he can like typically when the, this band's running it's on design runs at least this year and unfortunately it was a design run play that uh led to the the acl and but we're what i'm saying a guy that's much older you look at his arm, how it is, it's not going to get better. He is Typically, he is who he is. Really, what can you improve upon him outside of maybe like decision-making? Uh, I don't think you're really going to get a guy that can really rip it on a rope and throw it with zip, throw it with mustard. So you got to understand with the limitations, right? Opposed to a Jabba, who it's like, oh, this is a guy who, who was peaking at the right time. And he could definitely get a lot more polished, but the tools are just so tantalizing at that point where he dropped. Still think he was still a top 50 guy, but compared to being the 
at least the top 20 that he was projected to be. We have Hooker, who I don't, I'd still be willing to draft this cat, maybe top 75 or somewhere in the third round, maybe like still in that third round area. We're still talking, we're talking about still a day two prospect in my um, opinion. But if he doesn't go till early day three, it wouldn't surprise me. So I think with the injury, knowing when you draft this guy, uh, not really having a being able to not being able to see what he can do at like a senior bowl or at the combine, it's gonna hurt him. Teams are gonna bring him in, knowing he'll be good by training camp for the most part. Um, even to bring him along slowly and like, and I think it limits what type of team drafts this guy because if you're looking for a high upside developmental guy that's not exactly hooker you know so uh, if you're maybe a team that's more built and maybe you do have concerns at the quarterback position maybe like the jets like honestly the jets i think are a team that hey man if we could get a guy not even necessarily to develop but come in know our system then yeah maybe bring him into the offense so talk about that maybe in the third round, fourth round. But I think in terms of being a top 50 guy, unfortunately, that might not be in the cards. But I don't know. We still got a long way to go, man. We'll see. We'll see. But I want to stick with the quarterback position. Talk about Dorian Thompson Robinson. I feel like I haven't talked about him on the channel yet. Perhaps. I don't know. Regardless, he had a rough, rough game this week uh, against USC. Oh, gosh, excuse me. Uh, like, he did a lot of damage on the ground. 81 rushing yards, two touchdowns. It had four touchdowns through the air. But five turnover-worthy plays, man. The turnover-worthy plays have been immense, especially uh, the last couple of games, which, I mean, yes, they're the losses. But uh, even going to the Oregon game where they lost, I mean, the, the, yeah, turnover plays were immense. Go to the beginning of the year. Bowling game turnover. He had more turnover worthy plays than he did uh, big time throws. Like uh, I, I think in this, I, I really like the idea. At least what he can do as a ball carrier. And I'm not saying turn this guy into a running back, but maybe a receiver. Uh, because I really like what he can do as an athlete. Because like, because listen, with that type of mobility, I th really think he's likely changing positions. Like. The decision making for me isn't there, and I guess I will. We'll, I guess we could talk about why. So I think he has an average arm at best. Like he's got this long baseball like wind up uh, that he needs just to really get any type of zip on the ball. His vision can be, especially over the middle, um, a bit pedestrian. He lacks consistent ball placement on intermediate and deep routes, and. Like, I just think with his type of athleticism, he's better suited to switching positions. I really do. Because, like, he shows good strength as a ball carrier. Like, he has got a different, uh, like, a decent stiff arm. So, like, maybe have this guy be, like, a slot slash uh, scat back, you know? So, I, I just, that's my opinion. Uh, again, we saw the decision makings in this past game. Ultimately, even the final drive where he throws that interception because he just didn't see the linebacker over the middle. It's like, and that was literally a game filled with just mistakes from him as a passer. So if you want my thoughts on him, I kind of, I'm kind of in like the late day three area. That's how I see Dorian uh, or DTR. But yeah, those are my thoughts. Take her, take him or leave him. Take him or leave him. But let's jump to the defensive side of the ball with uh, Keon White at a Georgia Tech. Uh, I pretty sure I haven't talked about this cat this year. Having a fabulous season, had a heck of a game in that upset victory versus uh, North Carolina. Which, by the way, man, oh, atrocious drop from Josh Downs. Just something you haven't seen, saw from him this year. I don't think that's something that I'm going to take with like a grain of salt this time I got it. Uh, so I'm not too worried about that. But let's talk about, uh, I kind of want to talk about the background of White first. 
because uh, it, it's an interesting journey on his way to Georgia Tech. He was a former three-star recruit out of the 2017 class. He went to Old Dominion as a tight end and didn't switch positions till 2019 where he finished with 45 pressures and five sacks. I believe he, he was playing exclusively as an outside rusher. I mean, he still is, but I mean, at his size, you think, man, I, I want to see this guy maybe over uh, over the tackle or work in three tech every now and then. Like, I guess we'll talk about it. We'll, we'll talk about it in a sec. Um, he decided to transfer to Georgia Tech in 2022, but he did opt out of the tor- or 2022 in 2020, but he decided to opt out of the 2020 season because of the Rona. Then he suffered an ankle injury before the 2021 season and didn't see action until week 10, but he was basically on a snap count. So this is actually like straight up the first true year, true season we're seeing him against Power 5 play at at edge. It really is. I say it. Yeah, at edge. He basically works for the most part outside of the tackle, though Georgia Tech's pretty good about kicking him a little inside on passing downs like, this dude's had a heck of a season 38 pressures seven sacks even going back like old dominion man in his first year switching positions he put on a clinic in 2019 45 pressures five sacks don't have i don't think i have an exact age on him yet but i assume he's gonna be around 23 24 but he is just so like this dude drastically changed his body over his collegiate career and it was just kind of a total mystery like how is he gonna look this season and like dude this guy he works like he's already got a lot of natural strength and he know kind of like he's got a good feel of how to work with leverage he's got a good push pull move he's got a good bull rush uh and like holy moly even going back to old dominion i said they didn't really like he really hasn't seen power five play till this season in the acc but back at odu he played virginia tech and legit got the best of christian darisa back in the day like that's kind of legit that's kind of legit uh a guy that i don't even know man this dude's been in the position since 2019 so i don't think it's so much that he's relatively new to the position but i guess you could say in terms of significant snaps he was relatively new to the position but he's seeing him this year and he's doing wonders with it terms of athleticism i think he's an okay athlete uh i don't think he's anything like special i would say maybe above average and um what all like he's got a little wiggle to him but like i'm not really expecting much in terms of uh like overall athleticism his burst i would say those are above average but i don't think it's anything i'm just like oh oh like i think he's at this point man probably a top 100 prospect because like the dude has performed exceptionally well i will say this too that his tackling out in space when they need him to like uh, oh i didn't use that i used uh this one of the sacks uh, i had a picture of him making a play out on the flats on the running back like he immediately saw it from uh the gecko that it was gonna be a swing got out made a play like he's much better at playing um make it and tackles out in space uh this season as opposed to um the last time we saw saw him significantly in 2019 so a guy that i was like uh, entering the year just kind of like uh let's wait and see since we could really only go on that 2019 season so to be fair we haven't seen him in like two seasons but yeah no man dude was super impressive uh this past week against north carolina and we're going to talk about Jarek Reed the second safety out of New Mexico. This was a guy I've seen a few times in the comments, so I decided to get around to him uh, this weekend. And dude put on a display against San Diego State. They got molly whopped. Like they they lost. New Mexico is not a good team. But 15 tackles had a pick in the game. Uh, only allowed two receptions for 22 yards like pretty darn impressive man and like they prefer to use this cat a lot in the slot like honestly this man's best work is around the line of scrimmage 
uh it, like when you when he's playing when he is asked to play deep like he doesn't have extraordinary range like it's okay like i think he could be a split high guy but uh really the only time he made plays in those scenarios they were big time overthrows big time overthrows he was basically fielded in a punt at that uh at that point but i think where he's at his best is legit in the slot or around at least around the box like there's going to be a concern at 510 195 can you be a guy that can consistently play in the box i don't think so this is why he's probably going to be a slot only guy i really think i really think he's going to get slapped with the slot only tag but he plays so well in it like he is a ball hawk like this guy is a guy that can stick in the hip pockets of receivers and even push like even against more physical or pass catchers bigger body pass catchers he is still a contender at the catch point he's he he will put his arm up there now a lot of times because like i think his best plays in man coverage but when he is matched up like that uh he he does a real good job of reading the eyes of the receiver but he doesn't really turn around to make a play on the ball. Like I said, uh, like a lot of this dude's interceptions really have come from overthrows. Uh, but he might be one of the best run defenders at, at the safety position in the country. Like him and Quindale uh, Johnson out of Memphis, probably the best run defense uh, safeties. I would consider Reed more of a slot guy, though, opposed to um, Johnson, who I think could really play a lot of, a lot of different areas. But... They're the best when it comes to like stopping the run. Like uh, they they come down like Reed comes downhill explosive. Look at it lay the boomstick. Like he, he's a bit compact, but his play strength is ridiculous. It really is. Like he hits hard. His um his missed tackle rate on the year is 14.3, but his missed tackle rate in the box is 7%. Like around like this guy is at his best around the line of scrimmage he comes with a lot of juice downhill and like honestly like the hands are pretty like he's got some nifty catches like there's probably only like one or two highlight interceptions um but outside of you know him just catching overthrows but the but the ones he earned my gosh they look really really good now again his size will be a concern sticking him around the line of scrimmage like that i think or at least sticking him as a box safety but i think if you put him in the slot that kind of alleviates some of that especially with how good he is as a run blocker run blocker run defender so uh yeah i kind of see him as this sub package guy in the nfl uh i think i got like a late day three grade on him he's kind of like hovering six fifth six round for me but uh he was a fun watch man fun watch nasty mentality i love it dude uh he was actually a former juco guy uh, out of the 2019 class at 2018 he spent one season at northwestern or northwest mississippi community college before he went to the uh the lobos and dude's just been great his whole career um i don't think he hasn't suffered from injuries for the most part none that i can see He's always played significant snaps, even going to like the short end 2020 season. He played over 400 snaps. So dude is good. On to Taj Spears. Taj Spears. Taj Spears. I think it's Taj uh, Spears out of Tulane, who got his senior bowl invite after this SMU game from his coach. So hopefully he takes it. Technically, he still has another year of eligibility left uh, because of I believe was it because of the Rona? Uh, no, because I I really yeah no because yeah. I guess no. Technically, he I think he redshirted. Uh, twenty nineteen. Here, let me. How about I just pull up his background real quick before I just speculate what I wrote down. Where he at? Here we go. But he had a really good game, and uh, I really like this guy's style. A former three-star recruit, redshirt his freshman year, so he redshirted the 2019 year. Uh, but 
And the reason why I thought he made a red shirt in 2020 is because he suffered a season ending ACL and meniscus tear. So I was thinking maybe he used the red shirt on that year, but no, he didn't. So he's coming in this season as a, um, I think a red shirt junior. So he can definitely play next season. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, but he got a senior bowl invite. If he accepts it, I think it could be a good like mid to late day three pick. Uh, because this cat really got his mojo back last year. Like, he came into 2021, right? Uh, still not feeling... Like, he pulled his hammy during spring practices, trying to come back from that ACL meniscus tear. Apparently, he was in a real dark place. Like, oh, can't will I be able to come back from that? Because he had setbacks over the summer with it. He came basically hobbling into training camp. And really had to, like early on fight for time in 2021 like he only made uh three starts and it was near the end of the season but still managed to lead the green wave in rushing yards and now fully healthy having a fabulous year this guy's a home run threat anytime he has the ball he's so light on his feet and he has a nice jump cut the minute he plants his foot goes he accelerates top speed like nobody's business uh, he doesn't shy away from contact and honestly has like the stiffest stiff arm you'll see. It's not a jab or anything. It's legit just and not half bad. Not half bad. I think uh, if you're looking for like the best use of it, it was in the Miz Missouri State game, I think. I believe it was. But uh, yeah, man, a guy with this type of elus elusiveness, I would love to see on special like as a return man and maybe used a bit more in the passing game though like see what he can do in terms of what other route trees could he run could he guy could like uh shoot in the slot uh he does like you look at his size 5'11 195 not great like uh maybe he could put on or it's 5'11 yeah it's 5'11 maybe uh, you feel better about him maybe put it on another five or ten pounds of bulk because it's not ideal size but it's not terrible uh and especially a guy that doesn't like he won't shy away from contact like he'll low the show lower the shoulder and and try to get yards after like he'll break away from arm tackles and like you'll see this guy show good contact balance uh and he's always falling forward falling forward diving forward just to get every extra yard but can he maintain that type of physicality at that size in the nfl it's kind of the question um in pass protection dude gets body not a good pass protector so don't expect him to be but there is a lot to like about spears man a lot to like about him on to zach evans had a feel day to be fair um a lot of it didn't matter uh as, as freaking Ole Miss just got railroaded by Arkansas relatively early. Early, I think they were up 35 to six at half. Uh, but both him and Judkins ran for over 200 yards, and it's just nice to see a Zach Evans breakout game because you know, as an athlete, this guy is among the top in the at the running back class. He really is. And to be honest, like a lot of his uh, uh, runs Saturday against Arkansas were breakaway. Uh, not a lot of it was after contact like 89 yards uh were after contact uh but like he only had like four missed tackles on the day but, but like when this dude broke one tackle he was gone he was gone uh but had a really good day it's just nice to see him do well because i think as an athlete he's still talk like you still talk about this guy in day two at the running back position uh i do want to bring up blake quorum and his injury and it sounds like he's trying he wants to play the ohio state game so uh apparently the injury was they didn't feel good about bringing him back in the game despite he was their only means of offense but he thinks he's trending towards playing the ohio state game would be huge for michigan but uh yeah, man, a lot of runbacks had really sick days that I'm not going to, like, sick games this past week that I'm not going to get to. Bijan had a banger. Uh, Mo uh, Ibrahim had a 
huge game. I think he had the most rushing yards this past week with like 250 something. Had a real good game, but yeah, I wanted to mention Zach Evans. I feel like he's often forgotten about it in this class, but like he's legit, man. He's a legit prospect. People are cake are considering. Uh, he did have a few kind of like piss poor outings uh, against the better defenses of the SEC. For instance, Kentucky and Alabama. He was averaging under two yards per carry in those games. So is something to kind of be like, oh, okay. Uh, not to say he didn't play any like like he didn't play good defenses. Um but the best two defenses he played, he didn't do so hot against. So we'll say that. Uh, next, I got Carl Brooks. I talked about him uh, last week uh, in my non-conference, uh, top non-conference or non-power five players. Uh, but the guy, legit, he had 15 pressures this past week, actually. And I think the game was on Tuesday, Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh against Toledo and like that was the most pressures this week it was like I have to talk about this guy so if you haven't seen the other video then perfect I'm going to introduce you to uh this man playing this man at 6'4 300 pounds playing off on the edge because I think there's a good chance he's a top 100 guy I really do so he was actually formerly an unranked recruit out of the 2018 class, he entered Bowling Green as a 220-pound linebacker. So that's right. This man's put on 80 pounds. Though I'm not – I don't think he's actually 300 pounds. But we'll get to that in a sec. Uh, freshman, he started eight games, uh, led the Falcons in sack. He has legit been a starter ever since. And only time he's missed a game was back in 2020 with a foot injury. And this guy has been – uh, stupid good for the Falcons. He has over 153 pressures in his career and 30 sacks. Uh, this past week, three and a half tackles for loss, three sacks. Like the dude is just good and he's wreaking havoc. Now he doesn't. He's pro he's the strongest player on the field at any given like at every any moment he's on the field. Doesn't look he doesn't look 300 pounds. I'm really don't think he's 300 pounds. You could probably got away if, with it if like you said he was like 270, 275, and I've been like, okay, yeah, yeah, it looks it. But he does not look 300 pounds, and he doesn't move like he's 300 pounds. And but he's as strong as a 300 pounder. He is consistently throwing blockers into the laps of the quarterbacks. Legit, like, hey, take your boy, and then he proceeds. To hurry them but he, he shows good burst good suddenness for a guy his size he has probably one of the best bull rushes in this class and he, he could legit work a blocker one arm while scraping at the quarter or trying to bring him back the court uh down the quarterback or the ball carrier with the other and he will because he's so strong he gets a couple of fingers on you and then you're done man like his hands are legitimately jarring and i've seen him literally mow blockers down on the ground like so sick and he can play low too like this guy has a nice dip move uh and just, you look at his versatility he's a guy that has lined up a few times at zero tech but i will say his bend isn't great it's not ideal uh, a lot of times they're playing him y9 just so he can uh get that angle so uh, there is that but with his body type maybe you're playing him three four end maybe you're playing him maybe uh f4 tech like i don't know there's a lot of fun things you could do with this cat uh but again for a guy his size the burst it's all right for his size the speed it's all right for his size the bend it's all right for his size so it's like yeah uh not many different power or not many different pass rush moves with him um he just likes to win solely with power and i don't blame him uh, so a guy that probably needs a bit more polished as a pass rusher, uh, just in terms like technically, but man, this guy whew, just pops off the tape, man. He's had three, three games this year with t over 10 pressures and all of them were like, all of them included three sacks. That was against Akron against, uh, central Michigan and against Toledo, uh, did play against, um, UCLA start the year and had uh five pressures 
Uh, didn't have any pressures against Mississippi State, but also they get the ball out in like two seconds. So it's like, I, I, I don't, s- listen, I, I will say this. This may help you out as uh, evaluators out there, scouts, or if you just like watching game, like watching games. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't watch guys against Mississippi State's offense. You're not going to see it in the NFL. The ball gets out too quick. You can't really judge a defensive line on that. You really can't. So, is what it is. Uh, on to the next one here. At Perry had a banger of a game against uh, Syracuse. There we go. Where he uh, put up ten receptions, 119 yards, uh, three tutties. A guy that I, I have talked about more so near the beginning of the year, uh, but it's just good to see him like really produce. Uh, like he had a good game against Vandy to start the season out, but outside of that, man, he like his like his he hasn't really had like many top performances at the receiver position. But it's good to see. It was good to see this uh, this outing because like I think this guy is just he's gonna be a contested catch guy. Like he can create separation vertically, which you would have saw on his first touchdown against Syracuse. Uh, but a lot of that is him trying to use his hands. He can't do it with speed. All together. Like he's got fine speed, but it's not like he's going to be, he's not a consistent separator. This is your prototypical X wide receiver that can go up and catch the football. He's been better at contested catches this season with 41%. Uh, the drops are still a concern because uh, last season he was at 11%. In terms of drop rate, he's still at that 10%. If you don't know, that's a big red flag at 10%. And it's just, I don't think the ball skills are spectacular with with uh, Perry. I think he's got strong hands. It's just, it's just kind of wonky. Like sometimes just, I just, I feel like he just doesn't secure or at least he doesn't have a good positioning with his hands, if that makes sense. He's not really doing the Tory Holt diamond. If you're not familiar with that, then I don't know what you must have never played receiver. But uh, like, Tory Holt diamond up there, but he'll just, I don't know, maybe maybe, maybe that's just me. I think that was the uh, NC State game where I was just bothered by, they were just like drops, but his hands were at like funky positions uh but that is something to bring up the drop rate like if you're gonna be this guy that's not consistent separator so you're probably gonna want to see a good contested catch rate which he does have like if it's a jump ball he's gonna grab it It, it's just like occasionally you do see i guess the mental lapse uh or just the not great position of his hands to secure a catch all the time so is a red flag but i still think this guy's early day three uh, I like him in like the fourth round. I think is my actual grade for him right now. I don't know. We'll see as we get closer to the draft what he can do. Maybe to move up. I don't know if I don't know if I'll ever. I'm. I don't know, man. I think I. I think this guy could flirt with day two, like he did at the beginning of the year. Uh, but I was really hoping for those hands to be more consistent. And then got a downer here in Jalen Carter. Uh, Jalen Carter plays tackle. See, I had one person talk about, like talking about. I don't like. I don't really under like. I don't watch your videos. I listen to them. I don't know why I'm doing a voice, but and so I don't know the size of the guy. I don't see your overlays. I don't know what position he plays. Like first of all, based on what I'm saying, you should know who what position he play. Like he, any player plays, like. There's certain things you hear. It's like, oh, they're talking about safety, uh, defensive lineman, offensive lineman. There's certain things you hear. You're not going to hear uh, about drop rates or um, get in separation if this guy's an offensive tackle. So, like, come on. Uh, but I understand, like, sizes of these guys. If you're not watching the video, you don't know the size. But, I mean, you can look it up. I say the name of the guy. But Jalen Duncan... Uh, had a really rough outing against Ohio State. He's 6'6", 320. Really rough outing. Like, really bad. Uh, allowed 
five pressures and three sacks on 50 pass rushing snaps did have a penalty as well and this isn't a type of okay well you know what one bad game Uh, he was coming off another bad game where he allowed five pressures and two sacks against penn state this this cat's overhyped he just is at this point like i i said that i was like you know what i wouldn't mind this cat as like a day three like or, or a late day two pick uh like i think he made my offensive tackle rankings because like he, he's got good length he he does move exceptionally well but when he has to face guys that are strong like mama mia good luck like for being 320 man like the dude just the dude just can't handle guys that that are strong and can get leverage underneath them. Uh, and you could go back to the freaking Michigan game, allowed a sack, but he had seven pressures in that game. So it's like, I think this guy probably I'm I think I'm moving him to day three. I really do. Like this season, and in all fairness, this season is not last. Like 2021, he was pretty darn good. Penalties were a concern. And uh, the way he got those penalties are like holding, like there are a lot of holding calls. They really are. Like guys get under pads, and when they break loose, he's like, "Oh my gosh, he's holding on to dear life." Basically, once he once he gets beat, and that's kind of what we're seeing here too. Uh, this season is his penalties, eight penalties this year. He had ten in twenty twenty one. So. Uh, just thought I'd mention uh, mention Duncan just because we've seen the draft network consistently high on him, and I just I don't even I'm I'm not seeing it right now. Like in all three of his big outings against the best Big Ten teams, nah, hasn't produced well. Uh, does Maryland Maryland doesn't close the year with Iowa. Who does Maryland close the year with? Maryland football schedule. That's not how you spell schedule. That is. Oh, Rutgers. Okay, so. Maybe he'll have a solid game to end the year. Uh, But I want to end the video on a high note. Because let's celebrate Emmanuel Forbes. He set the record for career pick sixes. Not just in the SEC. But in college football. In in the FBS dude just give this man a round of applause if you don't know how many he has I believe it's six he had three in 2020 and then he has three on the year he had one against AM and then one against uh uh Kentucky that's right that's when you know it seemed like Mississippi State's offense could do nothing uh in the second half or even in the first half what am I saying second half uh, I think they only had three points in the first half, but uh, of course there's that one like there's that brain fart of Will Levis, and it turns into a pick six. Uh, they still lost the game, but uh, he had a. I thought he had a really good uh, game. I know it was against Eastern Tennessee State. Is what it is. The dude just set a record. I want to talk about him. Legit, I think he's top fifty at this point. I, I've been a huge fan of Emmanuel Forbes. He's always kind of he's always been a top 100, top 75 guy for me. But I think push this guy top 50 now, man. Like he he deserves it. Um, he is a very zone oriented corner playing for Zach Arnett. He's played a variety. He like th- this guy has cut his teeth playing a variety of different zone packages uh, and zone coverages. And he's got the length to be a press guy. Um, It's got great speed, good anticipation. Like, yeah, put this dude in the top 50. I think he's passed guys like Garrett Williams, who was shut down because of, was it an ACL tear? I'm not positive. Uh, Devin Witherspoon. Though it's close. I really do like Devin Witherspoon. Rough, rough, rough pass interference. Was it pass interference or a holding call? I don't know. Ended up costing Illinois the game. It was kind of rough. And it was kind of... I felt like the receiver was holding on to Devin Witherspoon. But it, there was a lot of hand action there. And typically, that's going to not go in the favor of the defender. So, that was rough. But I think despite that, Witherspoon still had a really good game. But then again, J.J. McCarthy can't throw worth crap. Um, 
Maybe I'll do a 2024 NFL mock draft this week. I don't know. Maybe. But, uh, yeah, dude, Emmanuel Forbes, man, I'm a big fan of. Uh, it would be nice if he got maybe, like, got to, like, 185, 190, but I don't think he needs it. He's always been one of the better run, uh, contain, run, defend, uh, defend in corners uh, in college football. And, yeah, even if the missed tackle rate is kind of mirroring what it was last year, which, again, for a corner, it's not even that bad. It's at 18%. Uh, but I still think he's pretty darn good, man. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. I mean, just look career, like 14 career interceptions, um, 16 career pass breakups. The dude is good. He has been more penalized this year. He does get a bit handsy, but also I'd rather, I'd rather have that. At least, you know, you have a guy with that type of physicality. It's tough teaching someone who's naturally not physical to be physical. So big fan of Forbes. I think it was reason to celebrate. Shout him out at the end of the video. Congratulations on your huge accolade. But that's it for the video. I only mentioned 10 guys in this. and I try to talk about some other guys uh, while I'm going through it. But uh, let me know who are some guys uh, you thought had great weeks this week in college football. And until next time, be easy, my friends. Later.